Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. We are live at Ogba. Welcome to our new section as we'll be reviewing the sport, the punch headlines on punch newspaper. Today I have Mr. Matt. Mr. Matt, welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Okay, sir. Mr. Matt, Tinubu declares state of emergency and plants 500 acres of farmland to the people of Nigeria. What do you have to say? Um, it's a good development. But let me quickly say that the very reason for prices of the food and commodity escalation in Nigeria is the same government, is government policy. And that he needed to declare that state of emergency, address the issue of production before most of these policies that is crashing the economy. Particularly the issue of the floating with Naira. I've seen Naira crashing against dollar to the extent that official window now exchange for almost 800 Naira to a dollar. And I've seen inflation increasing. So for me, government policy is not right for now. You need that to improve on your production, the first part of the economy, into agriculture, into solid mineral, work on NEPA, and power generation, before most of this policy of government that is hitting hard on the people. Opposition de demands INEC chairman to, to be prosecuted. What do you have to say, sir? Uh, I think the reason is not far fetched. It has to do with the way and manner they manage the election of 2023. Particularly the presidential election. Don't forget that before that election, the INEC as an umpire told Nigerians in the guidelines that they were, they were going to upload the election results electronically. That would really see happen, they reneged at the nick of time. And they gave us excuse that they experienced network glitch. So I think that made many Nigerians dissatisfied. And if you look at what happened to the river states, as you speak currently, Premier Time newspaper and BBC media organization want to count the presidential election result in INEC server for river states. And the result they are getting is a different thing from what INEC announced. So for me, I think because of the way and manner INEC handled that um, presidential election, that is the reason they are calling for the man resignation and prosecution. Okay, so National Assembly approves one um, 819 loans for subsidy palliative. How do you have what do you have to say about this, sir? I think the Nigerian government is taking the Nigeria for a ride. They are playing on our intelligence. How can you be approving 819 billion naira for palliative and you are approving 70 billion for National Assembly? The same National Assembly that is already living expensive life, I mean the members that is already living expensive life, that go move around in exotic cars, that have the capacity to pay for security personnel to protect them. We are budgeting, approving 70 billion for them. I think the government is playing on our intelligence. And speaking to the 8,000 per household uh, that is targeting 12 million households, I think it's grossly inadequate. Because as we speak, the crisis occasion, the economic crisis occasion by the subsidy remover, that amount cannot address it in the life of those vulnerable. I think the government is not paying attention to the right thing to do. Because for me, that money would have been deployed to convert most of these yellow buses, public transport uh, system, to run on CNG, compared natural gas. Because research has proven that if you use compared natural gas to power vehicle as again fossil fuel that we are using, you are going to save between 40% to 50% of your operational costs. Don't forget that before now, subsidy on um, kerosene have been removed and nobody is complaining because there's alternative. In the same vein, federal government would have provided alternative to use of fossil fuel, petrol, before subsidy removal. That way, nobody would have been complaining about subsidy removal. Okay, sir, you talk about his activities since he has been a president. 
and you said uh, he has not been making the right decision. You know, earlier, earlier this, earlier this month or last month, he also added a loan. Like he will be giving out loan for students. Then till now, I don't think anybody has gotten the loan because the requirements are a bit difficult to meet. Policy have been a good policy, but you just give an insight of the student condition and try to assess it. The argument now is the, the indigent, the despondent, the who need this loan, who are perhaps intelligent but they don't have means of uh, financing their educational pursuit. How? What is the possibility that they will be able to assess it? Because if you are coming up with policy and you target an audience and the audience that need it cannot assess it because of the student condition, then the aim and purpose have been defeated. So I think they will review the condition upon which one can assess it. In as much as the policy is supposed to be a good one, but if the people who are targeted cannot assess it, your aim has been defeated. So people believe the policy has been has been the edge why the schools have increased their tuition fee. Now schools are now schools are now expecting students to pay uh, tuition fee. Uh, you see, compared to how it was before that, we only pay for textbooks, um, all um, necessary accessories, but tuition fee was not paid then. I uh, see that federal government is uh, mad about revenue drive, and to that extent, the way and manner they want to get money, though the reason is not first. Because we are seeing a situation where debt management office have encouraged federal government to jack up their expected uh, projected revenue from 10.7 trillion to 14.7 trillion. Because the current debt to revenue ratio of about 73 to 0.5 percent is not sustainable. It exposes our economy to volatility. But having said that, I think the government on its own should know that most of this policy they are bringing out. The only way you can address the problem of Nigeria is to one, first of all, diversify the economy. We diversify into agriculture, diversify into our uh, solid mineral. The steel is there, develop our steel, develop our solid minerals. Because as we speak, we have a situation where foreign, foreigners infiltrate into Nigeria and they mine our solid mineral without the consent of federal government. And this is a source of revenue for federal government of Nigeria as an entity. So I think the government should look into other areas of revenue generation. Okay, sir. What advice do you have for the president and everybody making the law currently in Nigeria? Do you think they should they should they should start thinking from the perspective of the um, the poor Nigerians? Because we have at least we have sixty to seventy percent pro Nigerians currently in the country. So what perspective do you think they should start looking before making any before making any law? Uh, they should be thinking of people oriented uh, constitution. People's oriented laws. Those are the things they should be thinking of. And in that manner, in that regard, where they want to make law and you see at times they will roll out law. By the time they put conditions like we just mentioned the issue of policy of uh, giving loan to the uh, poor people who want to go to school. So they should have a way of ensuring that it, the target audience uh, gets it. So if I want to advise them, my advice is going to be in the direction that they should uh, be making people-oriented law. Law that will protect the, the, the economy, law that will improve on the livelihood of Nigerians, because the concern is unambiguous about all this is. The concern of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, particularly Section 14, say that the welfare of Nigerians and their security shall be the primary purpose of governance. So all their laws should be centered on the welfare and security of Nigerians. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time, sir. So that's all we have for the Punch newspaper's headline review. Thank you.